Well, we know, know another big focus for investors recently, of course, has been interest rates and what could possibly happen with those this year. Well, we do have the Bank of Canada set to make its latest interest rate decision tomorrow, its first interest rate decision of the year. And the expectations are that the central bank will hold its overnight policy rate at 5% for the fourth consecutive meeting particularly considering the hotter than expected inflation report we got from last month, uh, along with elevated wage growth. For more on the possible path for interest rates from here, let's bring in Jeremy Cronick. He's Director of Monetary and Financial Services Research at the C.D. Howe Institute and a former official at the Bank of Canada. Jeremy, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. So this is an interesting time. We're kicking off the year here with the first meeting for, with the Bank of Canada. But the you know, widely held expectation is that the Bank of Canada is going to hold this mm -hmm. time around. That That's what you're expecting as well? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that uh, there's a lot of clamoring for the bank to start uh, cutting rates as they uh, as inflation heads back to 2%. But like you said, the, the numbers in December were disappointing. Uh, headline inflation ticked up. Uh, core inflation, which is really a, a measure of the underlying pressures, also ticked up, at least one of the, the measures that the bank looks at very closely. So I think, you know, the, I think the bank was going to hold anyways, but mm -hmm. I think that those, those uh, figures really sealed the deal. Do you think that those uh, latest numbers, they will influence even the language that the Bank of Canada uses in this meeting? You know, if, if we might have heard some hints about, um, you know, preparing for cuts, maybe that language would be cut back. Or how, how are you sort yeah. of viewing the, the language possibilities? Yeah, no, I mean, the communication is hugely important. And, I, I, you know, my view hasn't really changed based on these numbers. I always, you know, I, I think I've said on this show a couple of times that there's going to be volata volatility in terms of, uh, you know, inflation ticking up and down as we head back towards 2%. But I still think the underlying uh, metrics for the economy are pretty soft. Like, I, I think consumer demand is is falling. Uh, GDP in the third quarter was flat, but it, was, it would have been negative if not for government spending. Uh, so I think there's a lot of... Uh, you know, things to suggest that there's weakening underneath some of these inflation numbers. So they might, you know, they might tweak the language from a communication perspective so that the market uh, understands that, that, you know, perhaps we're not heading to that cut as soon as, as they, uh, they thought. But I think the story really is the same. What do you think it would take for the Bank of Canada to take that that one sentence out of the statement that says like they're still w willing to do more? <laughs> you know, would they? Yeah. I mean, I mean, they don't have to, but yeah. do you think that that is a possibility that they could take that out? Yeah, I mean, I think you'd have to see, uh, you know more softening, right? Like, I think we need to get, uh, you know, a clear indication that the path is, you know, going to get down to 2%. Uh, and, and I'm not sure we're there either. Like, I think we are stuck a little bit in this in between. I, you know, five is certainly too high. You know, eventually, if we leave it at five, we will overshoot too. But I still think that there are, uh, you know, issues that are working their way through the economy. And there's some things on the horizon that are, you know, uh, potentially dangerous for, for the path of inflation, the geopolitical tensions in the Middle East, if that affects the supply chains, even though that's a supply shock where the bank doesn't have as much control, it might still, uh, you know, push inflation up. And, and you can't cut in that environment. So uh, I, I don't. I just don't think they're there yet. And I think they want to see more softening and a little more clarity. That the battle is, has has been won. Uh, at the CD Howe Institute, you do your own sort of round table in in gathering thoughts and ideas about where you you think monetary policy is going to be going from yeah. here, interest rates and that kind of thing. So can you give us that sort of range of possibilities that your crew sees for for the year ahead? Well, I mean, I, I think, you know, the, the consensus that we ended up with is a, a path of declining rates. Uh, we expect the hold and we think they should hold. Uh, but the path was for, you know, I think it was 125 basis points over the next year of cutting. Because if you think about the, the sort of the neutral By the rate, end of this year. Well, it, it, you know, it was sort of a, a year from the, the January announcement. So January of 2025. Okay. Um, but, I mean, that there's a range within that, you know, that people had. It was just sort of the median vote. I believe it was 125 basis points. Of, of fall, so mm -hmm. 3.75. And, you know, that's consistent with the idea that the neutral rate is probably around three, right? And so if you leave it at five, or even if you leave it above three, that's still going to keep pushing inflation down, and eventually you would overshoot two. But like I said earlier, I just think there's... There's still too much uncertainty on the path to start the, start cutting now, uh, and I think the bank wants to see you know some more some more indications that they're on a safer footing. And, and what's the biggest risk if if the Bank of Canada does um, start cutting too soon? I mean, not just in 
the inflation fight, but just in what it could potentially ignite? I mean, is it going to ignite something either way, no matter when yeah. the, the cuts start? Well, I mean, we've already seen the, the market's reaction to just yeah. the thought of hikes, right? right? So it is, and, and, and even in the housing market, you know, if, you, if they start, people start thinking those hikes are coming, uh, you know, perhaps the housing market does heat up a little bit. But I do think the biggest risk from the bank's perspective is inflation expectations, right? I mean, you, this was a, a tough period, obviously, for, for a lot of folks with inflation, but it was interesting to see long-run inflation expectations still pretty anchored at two, which means, you know, that people are pretty confident that the bank is going to do what's necessary to get it back down. And I just don't think you want to risk destabilizing those expectations. And I suppose if things do soften more and people are, are forced to pull back more, there's less you know, kindling to actually ignite at the, at the point. Well, that's right. I yeah. mean, you know, we've, we've done a lot of work to get consumer demand sort of slowing. And that took a lot longer because of all the savings that people had built up yeah. uh, during the pandemic. So it took longer than we thought to get consumer demand down. Uh, so, you know, you start, if you start lowering rates and you ignite that again, well, then you're sort of, you know, you're shooting yourself in the foot a bit. 